Hi everyone! How are you doing? I'm Rina, and today I have a new tutorial for Clip Studio Paint users. Do you want to learn how to fill in base colors fast and easy? Then sit down and open your ears, because I'm about to tell you the most important things you need to know to do that. But first, let me spam my Patreon all over again and remind you all that you can watch my tutorials weeks before I release them publicly if you support me with a small donation. You also get access to all my sketches, weaves, ideas for new projects, high resolution files and other cool stuff. So please, check it out! Clip Studio Paint has four different default fill tools, or packet tools, or whatever you want to call them. They are located inside the tools panel, in this little bucket icon. And along with so many settings available for each one, it can be pretty overwhelming to handle them at first. I mostly use the second one, but also the bottom two, depending on what I'm drawing. So these are the ones I'll be covering in today's video. Clip Studio Paint has refined the fills tool over the years, so you can easily get your flat colors ready for shading. The Refer to Other Layers bucket is the most typical one. I'd say every art program has a tool with these features. What's so special about the Clip Studio one is that you don't have to keep clicking on every blank space to fill it with color. You can just click and drag across the lines to cover all that part in a second. Then we also have the Enclose and Fill bucket. I love using this one when I'm coloring doodles, it's super fun. The way it works is similar to the lasso tool. You make a selection around the part you want to color. It doesn't even have to be close to the liner, just make sure the selection stays outside of the lines. And once you reach the end and close it, ta-da! It painted everything inside that selection. It works great for parts that have a lot of lines, like some complex hairstyles or clothes with high detail, for example. And lastly, there's the Paint and Field Area tool. It's sort of like a brush, but this one is smart enough to know it should only color inside the lines. I wouldn't recommend this one to create big spots of color, but it is great to go over blank pixels that usually happen around tiny spaces of the line art. Before, I would have to do that manually with a brush and carefully try to stay within the lines while I fix those spots. But with this fill too, you can just quickly click over those spots and be done in a moment. Ok, you've met my precious fill tools, but how do you set them up to fit your workflow? This is where I have to switch to teacher mode because we sadly have to face the settings. Horrible, boring and complicated settings. <laughs> I promise you though, it's worth the headache. Back when I tried to get familiar with Clip Studio Paint, the fill tool used to bother me so much because I just couldn't find a way for it to color my lines that didn't require me to fix the flats all the time. It took me a lot of trial and error, experimenting and watching tutorials to be able to understand how to adjust each option to my advantage. There's a lot of settings in this list, and you can even find more hidden in the wrench icon. Each bucket even has a few ones that are specific to their type, so I will only focus on the ones I think are the most important and common to each type. First, let's focus our attention on the Prefer Multiple option. See that lighthouse icon? Click on it. Now go to wherever you have your line art, it can be a single layer or a folder, Select it and click on the Lighthouse icon too. What does this do? It commands the Fill tool to fill our canvas, taking into account what's in our reference layer, aka the line art here. Now every new layer we make will only get colored inside our lines, with the advantage of having them all separated from the actual lines. You can also choose a different target on the Refer Multiple option, like Refer to all layers, the current selected layers, or Refer and fill only the layers in the folder. For me, none of these options are very helpful, so I'd recommend sticking to Refer to Reference Layer. By the way, you can also exclude layers automatically. Let's say you're working on a webcomic and your line art and text layers are all in the same folder. 
You can tell the bucket to ignore those text layers so it won't use them to create its selection. You can exclude sketch layers, blocked layers, and more. Let's rewind a little bit. The default settings of the field tools are most probably not going to work well for you as they are. So let's see what all these things do and how can you change them to fit your drawing style. Starting with tolerance. I think the concept is pretty much self-explanatory, but just in case. This refers to the number of similar pixels the bucket tool will fill. Imagine a gradient. If I click on the white side with a low tolerance, the selection will only cover a small part of that gradient. Whereas with a high tolerance, we can cover a larger space. How does this apply to base coloring? Usually, the thinner your line art is, the lower tolerance you want to choose. While the thicker your lines are, the higher the tolerance bar can go. We're basically telling the bucket, hey, see this limit over here? Well, you can grab a few more similar pixels too and color them as well. You always want to work with the highest possible tolerance, by the way. Sometimes though, if you do rather thin or open lines like me, a low tolerance will still leave ugly and painted pixels or not select all the parts properly. This is where area scaling comes in handy. With this option, we can make the color selection go a few pixels further so it can reach our lines completely and even color beneath them. I usually keep this at 1 for my fully rendered illustrations and minus 1 for doodles. Because yes, it can go the other way around and make the selection smaller too. Let's look at the scaling mode sub option now. Usually you'll want to keep this at up to darkest pixel. This means that the extra selection will stop at the darkest point of the line art. Choosing any of the other two will cause the colors to overflow the lines. Although area scaling is very useful when you want your base colors to stay within the line art, it may also be used when you want to intentionally have the colors go past the lines. Last, the third key aspect for layering our flat colors would be the close gap option. As it suggests, if you enable this option, the packet tool will detect the parts of the line art that are slightly open and treat them as if they were a continuous line. The higher the number, the more it will close the lines, although sometimes it leaves ugly shapes. If you also want to enable the sub option soak into narrow area, the bucket will be able to reach tiny spaces too. Pretty useful to avoid blank pixels around the tips of the hair in your drawings, for example. Playing with just these three options, tolerance, area scaling and close gap, you should be able to get the fill tool to work as you need it to. If it serves as a guide, on my refer other layers tool, my close gap is usually set between 7 and 15, tolerance also ranges from 10 to 20 most of the time, and area scaling always stays at 1. I do pretty thin and open lines and these values work pretty well for me. Now, other interesting options you need to keep in mind are anti-aliasing Gosh, I hate this word so much, it's so hard to pronounce for me! <laughs> and fill up to vector path. Anti-aliasing will give the edges of the base colors a softer look. Well, if you turn it off, the edges will be a lot crisper. It is up to you if you want to use this option or not. I prefer to have it on, but perhaps you need cleaner edges for your art. Let's see the other option now. Fill up to vector path. Please be patient now as this is a rather long and complex explanation, kinda, but I'll do my best to sum it up. 
vector layers are great to do line art as they have these invisible points inside of them that you can use to edit their form, shape or thickness without destroying the quality of the line. These points are part of a path. Think of it as the skeleton of every stroke you make. As you may be guessing now, fill a vector path means the base colors will reach up to the inner path or the skeleton or the line or stroke. So if you use vector layers for your line art and you want to make sure the colors reach underneath the lines, you'll surely love this option. However, I use vector lines for my line arts usually and I prefer to keep this option disabled. You see, when I erase part of the line art, instead of the eraser tool, I tend to do it with the same brush I am drawing the lines with, but in transparent color. As I am using a brush to erase, the program registers every movement as a new invisible stroke, therefore creating a new vector path. Even though I can see them, they are there, just in the shape of transparent lines, to put it somehow. So when I use the fill tool later on, well, this happens. It's troublesome, so I just prefer to not use that option. For the enclose and fill, you want to keep the color target option at only transparent or closed areas, including transparent, most likely. This is basically to control what the enclose and fill tool should fill. For example, if we set it to only transparent, the bucket will only cover the transparent pixels of that spot. It will not paint underneath the lines. If we set it to only black instead, it will only paint underneath our line art, as long as the lines are pure black, of course. With closed areas including transparent, you'll cover both things. So test this a little while you're playing with the area scaling bar to find what works best for you. There's a set of enclose and fill tools on the assets page that is super handy. If you don't feel comfortable enough playing with the settings, you may want to check them out. The icon is hilarious. <laughs> I'll leave you links in the description box. Another tip I want to share with you is that the fill tools can also be used with transparent color, aka you can turn the bucket into an eraser. It's pretty useful if, for example, you make a big blob of paint and you want to erase what's outside of the lines. Simply grab the Refer Other Layers Fill tool, set it to transparent color and click on the excess and it will be gone. Now many people have been asking me lately why I don't include the base coloring process in my time lapses. I just don't think I do anything special and it only makes the videos more tedious to watch. But since I'm making this tutorial now, I'm gonna show you how I go about that part of my illustrations. Like I've mentioned before, I mostly use the Refer Other Layers Fill tool and the other two for retouching or reaching tiny spots. I usually split my line art into several layers, so I put them all inside a folder and set it as the reference layer with the lighthouse icon. Next, I make a new folder below and name it color. And inside that folder, I make a new one and name it skin. I like to keep my files organized for the most part, so I separate my base colors into different subfolders. Make a new layer inside the skin subfolder, grab the fill tool and start clicking on the skin parts. Whenever there are tiny unfilled spots, I either zoom in and keep filling them, or grab the paint and filled area bucket and pass over them. Once I'm done with the skin, I make a new subfolder and repeat the process for every other part of the drawing, like the eyes, clothes, hair, extra props. Every element gets a new subfolder and every new color, usually, gets its own layer inside that folder. You can speed up the process a lot if you make a keyboard shortcut to create a new layer. 
That way you can just focus on filling in the colors without going back and forth to the layers panel to hit the new layer icon. You can even make automatic actions to create and name every folder for you with just one click. Every second counts, so economize them as much as possible. As we've seen, there are several options in the tools properties. My recommendation is that once you find the approximate values that work for you, lock them with this icon. You'll still be able to change them as you please, but every time you switch to another tool and go back to this one, the bucket will reset to the previous settings. This helped me a lot at the beginning when I was afraid of messing up my tools. Whenever you are more confident, you can just unlock it. And also, I advise hiding the settings you don't need and keeping only the ones you adjust the most on this panel. We don't need unnecessary options cluttering our working space. You can do that by clicking on the eye icon on their left. And by the way, if you need it, know that you can change the aspect of the buttons to sliders by clicking on the icon next to the eye and then show slider or show indicator. I feel like sliders give me more control over any adjustments I may want to make, but the indicators are also handy since each cell represents a specific value. I know it's a lot to take in right now, it might take you some time and effort to understand and get familiar with all these options. As most of them complement each other, it's easy to get lost when adjusting them. But don't give up! If you have any other doubts regarding the field tools and options I just explained, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. Of course, there are more options for every type of field tool I haven't mentioned and Clip Studio Paint keeps adding even more with every new update, but I believe these are the ones most artists need to know to layer their flats comfortably. And that was it for today, I hope the video was useful! Subscribe to my channel and enable the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And also support me on Patreon if you're interested in getting to see all my art ahead of time, along with content I don't post anywhere else, such as sketches, high resolution versions, and layered files to learn about my drawing process. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time! Bye bye!